Hi, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to my Disinformation Dozen series. The Disinformation Dozen are 12 influencers identified by the Center for Countering Digital Hate as being responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. And in this series, I'm going to be showing you why they deserve the title of Disinformation. Starting off the list, we're going to be talking about Sayer G. Let's go ahead and hear what he has to say, and then I'll explain the science of why he's wrong. If you go and look at Event 201, which is a matter of just the public record, it's not a conspiracy theory. They did a live simulation of a coronavirus pandemic, literally. This was done in October last year, and this was funded also by the Hopkins Health Security Center, as well as the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation. Right, so he's talking here about Event 201, which was a tabletop simulation of what the world would do if a pandemic coronavirus were to emerge and start spreading throughout the population. He's using the fact that this simulation happened as evidence that the real thing was planned. But that's like saying any building that ever caught on fire was planned because they had a fire drill. If you actually look at the reality of the situation, these kinds of pandemic tabletop simulations are really common. Why? Because the threat of a pandemic virus is real and we have to be ready. For example, over the years there have been several tabletop simulations for this exact same thing except with an influenza virus. That's because influenza virus pandemics are a real threat. Just like having a fire drill and being ready when the real thing happens, it's the same thing with the pandemic. We have to be ready when it happens. And the world clearly was not ready for COVID-19 despite the simulated tabletops. Was there a singular viral particle that creates, created a singular outbreak in Wuhan that then the scientists descended upon and isolated a singular viral particle and then somehow transferred that to animals and showed it could create, create the same disease, right? And then we isolate the particle to show it was the original particle they think caused it. None of that happened. Actually, yes, all of those things have been done by hardworking scientists from all over the world. Look, in order to demonstrate that a virus actually causes a particular disease, we have a certain set of standards that we use in order to demonstrate that fact. These are called Rivers Modified Koch's Postulates, or just Koch's Postulates. There are six steps to this process. The first step is to isolate the virus from the diseased host. Second step is to cultivate that virus in host cells. This is because viruses are not living on their own and they need a host, they need cells in order to actually do things. Step three is proof of filterability. Viruses are really small. So if you use a filter with a really small pore size, then it'll catch all the bacteria, all the fungi, all the other things that can cause disease and viruses will flow through. You then take that filtrate and see if that is infectious. These first three steps have been done several times by several different labs from all over the world. Their work is peer-reviewed and published in journals and is freely available for you to read. Step four is to observe the production of comparable disease in the original host species or a related one. Step five is to re-isolate the virus from that infected original host species or a related one. And step six is to determine a specific immune response to the virus. All of these things have also been done in several papers done by several groups from all over the world. Again, all of this work is peer-reviewed, published, and freely available for you to read. The fact that Sayer G has either not read these papers or continues to ignore their existence is just one of the reasons why he deserves to be included in the disinformation dozen. But there's more. And these viral particles somehow make it into a droplet issuing from someone's face and then somehow penetrate into your cells, which by the way, the tensile strength of cell membranes is equivalent to steel. Did you get that? If it wasn't clear to you already, this makes it even more clear that Sayer G does not understand basic biology. Cell membranes are really strong, yes, but they're also fluid. Cells need to send material back and forth to each other in order to communicate. So that means that they're constantly taking things into their, into their membrane and sending things out of their membrane. It's fluid. Viruses take advantage of these mechanisms in order to enter host cells all the time. 
the strength of a cell membrane doesn't matter when a virus has a key directly to the doorway into your cells. So the cellular theory of disease puts the responsibility back on the actual person whose body is a byproduct of whether or not it's been exposed to certain chemicals, EMF, certain psychogenic disease vectors, such as, again, the belief that your body can be infected by invisible particles. While they're not invisible, we can actually see them in really high resolution if we use the proper tools. But also, everything he says here about the environment making you sick is included in germ theory. You just need that germ in order to cause that specific illness. Germ theory fully accepts that certain individuals are going to be more susceptible to infection or severe disease based on either their genetics or their health, which can be affected by their environment. It does not mean that germ theory is fake. I mean, this is the most basic science that SayRG is straight up denying. So anyway, for those who are following, yes, Antoine Beauchamp was correct. And I think on Louis Pasteur's deathbed, he even acknowledged that this guy stole, he stole the idea and basically Beauchamp was correct. This is something that the disinformation dozen does all the time. And you'll see this throughout the series. They will say, oh, I think this person said this, or, oh, this person admitted it, but there's no evidence for that. They don't cite it. They don't actually provide proof that the person said those things. They just say it as if it's true. But then when you actually go and check to see if what they're saying is true, it's not. In all of Louis Pester's biographies, there is no evidence that he said this on his deathbed. Sayerji is just pulling this out of the air in order to convince you that germ theory is false. Exactly. Carrie Mullis and PCR tests, we also reported on that, is a PCR test was a manufacturing process, right, for amplifying nucleic acids. It doesn't enable you to identify, specify specific viruses. Actually, it can and does identify specific viruses because it specifically detects unique sequences of genetic material. And I've gone over this before on my channel, but people love to talk about how Kerry Mollis said that his test was being misused. But if you read the actual original patent that Kerry Mollis wrote, it will tell you that one of the applications of PCR is diagnostics of viral and bacterial infections. The only reason he changed his mind later in life is because he became an AIDS denier, and his test worked directly against his idea that HIV does not cause AIDS exosomes and certain types of viral particles are literally identical. You cannot distinguish between them. Yes, you can. Exosomes are just tiny packages that cells use to communicate with each other all the time, and they are very well characterized. They'll contain proteins and material directly from the cell that it came from. But a virus is going to contain proteins that are completely foreign to the host genome. That's the easiest way to tell. I mean, really, this idea is debunked by the most basic understanding of cellular biology. But because Sayerji is capitalizing on a very emotional, very difficult time in history here, he is able to get away with spreading this disinformation, and people are just buying it hook, line, and sinker. When I was reporting on the stats being inflated, okay, or at least knowing they were and not even having the objective evidence yet to, to show that to people. And then Fauci comes out two months ago and it says, no, this is only 0.1% case fatality rate, 150 times lower than the initial estimates coming out of China, 40 times lower than the who says is, is true for right now. And no one was held accountable. This guy's still acting in the task force as if someone we should listen to. Well, yeah, you probably should listen to him, especially if you're going to criticize him, because he never said that COVID-19 has a 0.1% case fatality rate. He said that about the flu. About COVID, he said it was 10 times higher than the flu, at least 1% for case fatality rate. Now, this was a prediction by Fauci. It wasn't a final statement. He thinks that the case fatality rate is probably going to fall around 1%. Currently, as of April 11th, the global COVID-19 case fatality rate is 2.16%. This is a dynamic number because cases and deaths are always happening and always changing. We won't have a final number until long after the COVID-19 pandemic is over. But for now, it is at 2.16%. Not 0.1%. No one ever said that. Sayer G is lying. That's where we're going to stop with Sayer G. 
I think that clearly demonstrates that he deserves the title of disinformation dozen. He lies to his audience, he makes things up, and he misrepresents basic established findings in science. Thank you for watching this first installment of the Disinformation Dozen series. I do hope you'll join me for the entire thing, not only to learn that these kinds of people exist and that their ideas should not be taken seriously, but to understand why their ideas should not be taken seriously. All of the links to all of the scientific papers and topics that I talk about in this video are linked in the description below so that you can read about them yourself. Because remember, I'm not an authority on these topics, I'm just telling you what the best data say. And if you do want to join me, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me in my second installment of the Disinformation Dozen series, where I'll be debunking Sayer G's wife, Kelly Brogan. See you then.